what do you know, it's not raining today. Slight chance of a shower, a passing shower this morning, but I don't think that's even gonna happen. I think it's gonna be dry all day. The question is, will we see the sun? I think it's questionable. We got three and a half inches over the last few days, inches of rain that is, which is not too shabby. It has slowed down production here, but we need rain more than I need to be productive. So we'll take it. But we still need a lot more to end this drought. It's been going on for years. We have a couple good sized Douglas fir logs here and then two small ones. These ones look like they are really good logs on the outside, but if you look close, they have some problems. There's a crack in the middle. Right here we have a pitchy spot. I don't know if that's just a pitch pocket or if that's ring shake that's gotten all pitched up. That's on the butt end. On the top end we have the same crack, only a little smaller. And we have something funky going on over here. It's about the same spot on the other side. The goal here is going to be to try to isolate the defect to as few boards as possible. Here is another reason why I prefer to quit logging when the weather gets wet. I would prefer not to have my logs being drugged through the mud and covered in mud like this. When it's muddy, I clean up a little path for the blade. Not only is mud hard on the blade, but you get mud all over the rails, which then gets on the lumber. It's just an all around good time of the year to not be logging. These logs came from, I'll show you where they came from. That's just an excuse to watch a tree fall down again. Here is one of the flat-headed fur borers that is killing the tree. A couple that got smashed by the ax. If we would have left this tree out in the woods, these would have matured into flying insects that would then fly in the spring, go lay eggs to make more of these larvae that will kill more trees. But we're gonna put a stop to these and the hundreds of other ones in this tree, if not more than hundreds. Every one of these in this tree are now doomed. These logs are 14 feet long. I need some 14 footers because I think I finally figured out the size, the dimensions of the cabin. Gotta clean all the mud off the rails before I set the clean wood down. But right now I'm thinking 16 by 14 to keep it under 200 square feet. And it's not that I want it to be that size. The reason to keep it under 200 square feet is, I don't know if any of you have ever noticed, but government people can be really annoying sometimes. It's like they haven't learned simple, common manners that most of us have no problem with, like minding their own business. I think most of us have figured out how to do that, but I don't know what it is with them.
Let's see what we're getting ourselves into with this pitch ring. That one looks good. This is the one that's getting into the pitch ring. Ooh. That one's a bit of a mess. Might have been an old injury that caused all this. But from here back, that's a little over eight feet. So I can get two good eight foot pieces out of this. And the rest of it's questionable. Now to see what these cracks look like. When I know a log has pitch pockets like this, I do use blade lube. Otherwise, I'll get a lot of pitch buildup on the blade, which can cause a lot of problems. This one has this crack through it. Maybe not the best for good structural material. The far one has a bad spot, but eight feet of it is really good. Here's the pitchy crack. It has pitch oozing out of it. We are going to see the sun today, poking through the clouds. I ended up with five really good boards. This one got into the pitchy spot a little, but that's no big deal. Two of them that are really pitchy on this end, but I can get two really good eight footers out of the other side. Then these two, I was able to isolate this crack to this one board and a little bit into this one by if I would have had this cant oriented 90 degrees the other way, or even at an angle, and made my boards this way, cutting them like this, then every board would have had that crack in it. But having the cant oriented to where the crack was horizontal when I made my cuts, I was able to isolate it. I think I just said the same thing twice. I'm repeating myself already. Well, now to put the bigger one on here and see if we can do the same thing, except I got this lumber piled on it. I have a little bit of a gridlock problem in this spot. We may address that situation in the next sawmill video and answer a common question I get about this sawmill situation. I'll get these put away. You can take a little break while I do that and charge up the camera batteries. Then we'll go from there. Okay, back to work. If I was like Yosemite Sam, I might say, back to work, you lily-livered varmints. But that wouldn't be nice. I wouldn't do that. Not on a day like today when we're talking about people having manners. That guy did not learn manners. Maybe he should have went to work at, well, never mind. I won't say the planning department. That wouldn't be nice. Speaking of rude, this log has problems. If we look at the top end, the crack, is horizontal, mostly horizontal. There's the pitch ring, but I think we're getting close to the end of the pitch ring. I think it goes more toward the top of the tree. Then when we go to the butt end, the biggest crack here is almost 90 degrees to the one on the other end. And there's this little crack pitch pocket here. Well, my strategy on this one is going to be start milling and hope for the best. That's all the wisdom I have to offer on this one.
so far the wood is looking really good. Ooh, I really hit dirt. Really bad. That is what we don't want to do. I didn't make my clean path through the log low enough. In the blade sharpening video I did a while back, I said, I have enough blades to last me for a long time. Not if I keep doing things like that. We're just starting to get into this crack, but it doesn't look like much of a crack on this end. It only goes in that far. We'll have to find out what's going on there when we get deeper inside. But we have a problem. That hot glowy thing that was up there earlier with a bunch of clouds, the clouds went away and now that hot glowy thing just fell out of the sky. And I don't think it's going to come back today. It's going to get dark soon. I don't have enough time to finish this. I didn't mean for this to be a cliffhanger, but consider yourself hanging on the edge of a cliff to find out what's going on with these cracks. We'll finish this in another day or two, probably not tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think we're gonna go on a little adventure. We're gonna do something different. Adventure may be a strong word. Let's say we're gonna go on a field trip. That is if all works out as planned. I'll be going tomorrow anyway. I don't know when you guys will go, when that one will come out, but should be soon. I can see my breath already. Without clouds, this is gonna be a cold night, I think. I have just a few chores to do before it gets dark. I gotta go, we'll see ya.